Breaking news, you can be even more kissable than you are right now with Lolo Lips by Barmaids. The makers of the exquisite Lolo Bar has one of the best lip balms available. Some lip balms can cause your skin to dry out if you stop using them or if you lose them. And let's face it, we all lose them. This product doesn't force you to reapply in order to maintain the healthy balanced levels of moisture ideal for beautiful lips. It comes in eight tasty flavors with no paraffins, no fillers, no dyes, just natural lip moisturizer that has everything your lips want and nothing they don't. I dare anyone to try it and not feel like an addict. Kiss me, Lolo, I'm in love. Hi, and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is Saturday, September 29th, and this is episode number 74. My name is Tina, also known as Blooming Knitter, and again, welcome to the show. Um, been a busy day for me today. It seems like all Saturdays are busy for me now, um, with all the stuff that we're doing around the house, either... We're doing stuff around the house, or I'm having club, or something. So let me start back at last Saturday. Last Saturday, after I recorded in the morning, uh, we had a family dinner with my in-laws, which w went really well. Um, as always, it's nice to see family. Uh, we had a great Mexican feast, and then we played a game that I had never played before called Apples to Apples. So that was quite fun, and the game, the game is really a fun game, and easy, and hilarious, and it's definitely something that I want to, um, get so that I can, we can play it with our friends and what have you. So that, we did, that's what we did last Saturday and I took my basic knitting um, with me. My uh, I took my mom's socks with me so I could knit on those while I was there. So I got quite a bit done on those and I'll show those to you shortly. Um, but today, this week has been just the same old, same old. You know, I go to work, come home, work out, go to bed, get up, go to work. <laughs> the same thing every all the time during the week I don't plan a lot during the week because there's just not enough time you know if I want to work out most days of the week I just can't can't plan things but this week I did start a new training program um, training for a half marathon now my goal is not to actually run a half marathon I mean to run the distance, but not to run in a specific race. Um, I've only run in one race before, uh, which was fine. It, there's nothing wrong with it, but I just, I just enjoy the running for myself, not necessarily to run in a specific race. Uh, so this program that I'm doing is just a matter of being able to build up to, to train and to be able to run the 13.1 miles that is a half marathon. And I'm using a program called uh, Walk, Run, Jog. No, Walk, Jog, Run. And let's see. It's this one right here. Walk, oops, not that one. <laughs> let's go back. Walk, jog, run. It looks like that. Let me see if it'll... Yeah. Walk, jog, run. And what I like about this app is that they have training programs that you can download that are for free. And let me click on... There's different ones. Let me actually, let me go find more plans. There's different ones for beginners, intermediate, and advanced. You can train for a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, or a marathon. For instance, this is the beginner programs. They have the 5K. You can run a 5K for your first time. You can walk a 5K. You can walk, run a 5K. You can run, walk a 5K. And you can do a beginner run 5K. Those are just the 5K training programs. 
and um, and then there's the 10k the same thing you can walk a 10k you can walk run a 10k you can run walk a 10k and you can do a beginner run 10k um, and these programs are different in length like um, looks like they're about two the 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 5k and the 10k are about two month programs so eight weeks the half marathon program that I'm doing, which is the beginner run half marathon, um, is I think 14 weeks. Um, I don't know, but it does, what it tells you it in in the description of the of the program. For instance, this one here. This is the the beginner run half marathon. It tells you. Um, who this t particular program would be good for. Somebody who has, um, who wants to run a mar half marathon for the first time, who's currently running three to four times a week for three to four miles. It's a 14-week program um, with three 30 to 40-minute runs a week, gradually progressing to to three 30 to 50 minute runs and um, with one long run per week of four to ten miles so it gives you a little basic information um, on what programs are good for whom um, and same thing that like the for 5k there's a run your fi run your first 5k for non runners or for anyone out of practice and again it's just it gives you a brief description and then you can download the plan and um, I think this one is also for eight weeks. But I really like it because not only is there the training program, um, but this particular program encourages me to do cross training instead of running every single day because that's kind of what I was doing. And I think I would get burnt out or I would get injured. And this one kind of forces you into doing a little bit more cross training. So for instance, uh, my program for this week, actually, let me go back to my training. So my program for this week was on Tuesday, I ran for 30 minutes. Wednesday, I did some cross training. And in this case, Wednesday, um, Steve and I did play the Wii game. We did the um, Just Dance video game on the Wii. Uh, Thursday, I ran for 35 minutes. Friday, I did another cross-training session, which in this case, I did a wee workout with the cardio boxing, which I'll talk to you about in a couple minutes. Um, and then today is a rest day, but technically, I didn't really rest today because I did a lot of work upstairs doing taking care of the drywall, which pff, I'll talk about that in a minute. And then tomorrow is my four-mile run. And this is just week one. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea of what, what the program's all about. And each week it tells you what, what your, what your plan is. Um, the first few weeks are run for 30 minutes one day and then run for 35 minutes the, the next run day. And then you have your endurance run, which is, works out for me on Sunday because Sunday is a good day for me to do a long run. And, um, it just slowly builds up to the 13 miles. So that's what I've been doing with that. The kickboxing, I I did, um, there's a program from Gold's Gym on the Wii for cardio kickboxing. And I used to teach kickboxing um, when I was teaching aerobics and such. And I really missed it. And I've had this program for a while. I haven't used the Wii in quite some time because with the basement all torn up, we didn't even have it plugged in. Uh, but I did get back to that yesterday. And today I am very sore from all of the punches and what have you. Um, there's not a whole lot of kicks that go along with this particular program. At least I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, but it's just mostly upper body, which is good. It's a good cross-training program for me when I'm running because when I'm running, I'm using my leg muscles anyway. So 
So I've been having fun with that. And I'll probably continue to do the cardio kickboxing on the Wii at least once a week because I do really enjoy that. Um, I don't enjoy so much um, exercise DVDs. I've done them before, but it seems like every time I do a DVD, once I do it two or three times, I know it by heart and then it gets boring for me. So I don't typically do exercise DVDs, although I think I have like I'm close to a hundred because <laughs> I always think that I'm going to do them and then I realize after I do them a couple times that nope, not, not so interested in doing that. So that's been my workout this week. It's been, it's been a really great week. Um, and then today I was doing, doing some prep up in the upstairs bedroom to do more, um, mudding of the drywall and what we have found out is that we don't think that they used primer when they painted, originally painted that room. Um, or it's just that it was so hot up there before that the paint, the paint is literally just peeling off the walls. So I, I was trying to prep the area where I was going to be mudding over painted areas. And we found out that it was just easier to basically strip the paint right off the walls which in some areas it goes quickly in others it's a little bit more tedious but I'm just taking a razor blade and basically peeling the paint off in a certain area where we're going to be mudding and then I'll sand down um, where the paint doesn't get peeled and then I don't know if I'll mud over that area or we'll just sand it down so that it's smooth and then paint so, between the kickboxing yesterday and all of that work that I did this morning, I think I'm going to be pretty sore tomorrow. I'm already pretty sore. Uh, Steve and I just got back from going out for pizza for lunch. And just sitting there for, I don't know, the 45 minutes or an hour that we were at the restaurant um, having, having our lunch, I got up <laughs> My whole body was sore. My shoulders hurt from all the punching yesterday. And my body is just, I can feel that I've done some different workout than, I'm, than I have been used to because lately all I've been doing is running. So it feels really good to, to get back into some different kinds of exercise instead of just the running. Um, my, it'll take a couple, maybe about a week or so for my body to adjust to the new workouts, but they're new old workouts, so my body shouldn't take too long. If, I, if it was a brand new thing that I had never done before, my body would take longer to adjust. But because I've done the kickboxing before, I don't think it's going to be... Um, my body will adapt pretty quickly to that. Um, so, yeah. I'm... I'm really having fun with it, so I'll keep you informed about what I'm doing. And, and I think I'm going to also start a thread on the group for running, um, whether you want to train for a 5K, a 10K, or half marathon, or marathon, or whatever, uh, just to kind of keep each other motivated, because I really need um, motivation sometimes, you know, just to, to keep going and just to have a goal, you know? So I will be starting that thread um, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. By the time you see this, it should be started. And the other thing that has kept my attention this week, which normally it's podcasts, but this week I've been a little obsessed. And it hasn't been with Sims. Nope. It's been with Zac Efron. <laughs> I, it's li really, really crazy. I, um, I watched the High School mu Musical videos or movies, I don't know, last year or something, and I really enjoyed them, but I just really didn't get into it. But then this past week I decided, oh, I think I'll watch the High School Musical movies again. And I've been obsessed with Zac Efron this week. <laughs> I watched all three High School Musical videos. I watched 
I think I've watched every single one of his movies so far. Oh no, I haven't. I didn't watch um, the Derby Stallion yet, but I've I've watched all all kinds of Zac Efron movies this week. And every time Steve would walk into the room and I had another one on, he'd roll his eyes and turn around and walk back out again. And usually, I don't get obsessed like that over over. Um, actors or anything like that you know I don't think of them as something special but I don't know this week I've just kind of felt this need to watch Zac Efron movies I've been a little teeny bopper this week watching his movies um but yeah he's he's pretty hot even when he was playing in high school musical he was pretty hot and uh I watched a new one that he that came out I think, it, I think it just came out on DVD recently. It's called The Lucky One, and he plays a, a Marine. So he really got into really excellent shape before this movie, and it really shows. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, it's kind of encouraged me to get back into to really getting back into my workouts because I feel like I'm so out of shape, and I just need to get back into getting back into physical activity more than just just the running but yeah I've been uh, a little crazy with that this week so <laughs> Steve thinks I'm absolutely crazy <laughs> but I like I love the singing and dancing I didn't think I was gonna like the high school musical shows it I mean I don't I think they came out in 2000 I think it was, I want to say 2002, 3 or 4 or something like that. And I had not seen them until last year. And, um, because I didn't think I was going to like them. And then I think I saw the 17 Again movie, which he plays in, and I really enjoyed that movie. So then that's when I went back and watched the other ones. And the singing and dancing and, and everything, it's just really enjoyable. I have always liked musicals. Um you know, Greece and that sort of thing. I grew up with Greece and so it was fun. Steve and I have been dancing around the house and singing and <laughs> crazy. Anyway, now that I've jabbered on for, I don't know what, 15, 20 minutes almost, let's get into the knitting. And that is all we've got today is knitting because I have no spinning. I, I didn't do any spinning again this week. Um, I did have to send one of my woolly winders in for a little bit of doctoring. Um, my one woolly winder that I've had on my ladybug since the beginning has always been kind of off. And since I've been spinning, had, had been spinning a lot on my sidekick with my woolly winder, I just thought that something wasn't quite right about my woolly winder that was on my ladybug. So I finally took a short video of what was going on with my woolly winder and I emailed it to uh, the woolly winder company and they said, yeah, something's not quite right. Um, it probably something in the process of making it, something didn't get done right. So they said, just send it back to us. We'll fix it and send it back to you. So I did that and I received it back. I think Tuesday or Wednesday of this week and um, so they had it for maybe a couple days and then they sent it right back to me uh, but I haven't put it back on my ladybug yet but I do want to get back into spinning on the ladybug which has the alpaca and I do want to finish up the rambouillet which is on the sidekick because um, I'd like to get that off the wheel I'd like to be able to start something new but anyway the knitting I do have a finished object in the form of slippers. Yes, I finished them and they are slightly different because I decided to change it up a bit when I did the second slipper, but it's, from the front they look just about the same. Um, and again, this was all done with, with scraps, my wool scraps that I have, and I knit them up. In fact, Sunday I knit Last Sunday, I knit the whole second slipper, and I just had to uh, seam up the bottom last night. So, another pair done. That's two pairs now, and I have already picked out the yarn for the next pair that I'm going to make for, for Steve. Um, another pair of scraps that I have, although 
I'm doing it, I think I'm doing it in, in blues and red, and I have quite a bit of those colors, so it might not even look like a scrap sock or a scrap slipper, so. Um, but another finished object is done. Now, I had thought I was going to have two finished objects for you this week, but I had a bit of a I guess a, a yarn fail. I don't know if you can hear that, but Crystal's upstairs crying. Anyway, I was working on my Henslow this week, and I almost finished it, but this is what happened. I ran out of yarn, and I had this much more to go. Now, I'm working on the edging. This is the edging, the, the knitted on edging. So, it's like seven or eight stitches or whatever. So, it's not like I'm just casting off here. But I literally ran out of yarn. And I even went back. Um, I think I mentioned before. In fact, if you see where my markers are down here, this is where this marker here, this first marker, is where I thought, hmm, I think I'm going to run out of yarn. Right back there. Almost even before the center of the shawl. And I thought, I started, and at that point I started weighing my yarn. And every single repeat that I did, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to finish the shawl. I mean, I was just praying and praying and praying that somehow it would all work out. It didn't. But I did mention before that um, I had... Oh, that, this was another piece that I, th that I thought I would be able to... I, I saved two little pieces from when I cut my yarn, when I wove in my ends, thinking, oh, if I have to knit two or three stitches left, I need way more than two or three stitches, so this little bit is not going to do me any good. But anyway, I mentioned last week, I think it was, that I thought I did the incorrect bind-off for the top, that I did a Jenny stretchy bind-off instead of the bind-off that they called for. So I thought, well, maybe... If I take that bind off off and redo it, I will have enough. Well, I did that, and you see where this string is attached? That's where, that's how much further it got me from the, from the leftover, from the bind off after I redid it. But it was still not enough. And even, even though I tried to make this, this join as short as possible. Um, usually I make them a little bit longer than that, but it just was not happening. So, no matter what I did, I was not going to have enough yarn. Now, I don't know if it's because the pattern was incorrect, or I got the wrong gauge, or for some crazy reason, I didn't have as many yards as what I expected to have because according to Ravelry, this particular yarn has 550 yards in a skein. So I'm thinking, that's plenty. The pattern calls for something like 437 or some crazy number like that. So I'm thinking, that's plenty. Obviously, something was not right. Um, I don't think gauge could have been that much of an issue, but I didn't check gauge because we're talking about a shawl. And I'm thinking, if, if I think I have 550 yards and I actually only need 400 and say 50, I should have plenty, even if my gauge is slightly off. Well, I didn't. So, here's my plan. Just before the knitted on border, and I don't know if you'll be able to see, I can't see what I'm showing you. 
Just before the knitted on border, there are several knit rows. So my plan is to take out the knitted on border all the way and rip back two full rows of the, um, so one row and then the next row. So instead of three rows or three bridges um, before the knitted on border, I will only have two. Yeah, three, but instead of three ridges, I'll only have two ridges. So instead of six rows, I'll have four rows. But that will get me enough yarn to finish this bind off. It doesn't change the number of stitches or anything, but it just gets me more yarn by having um, those rows. Now, I'm doing this because the knitted on border only took me two days. If it took me longer than that, I probably would have either found some other yarn to fit in there, but I don't like things that, that look um, not right. And if I put a different yarn in there or whatever, I just, I wouldn't be happy with it. So I'm going to rip it back. I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. And I think that it will look just fine without um, those extra rows. And it'll be perfect. And the, the bind off at the top is a little bit more sturdy than what I had before. Obviously, because it took out some of that extra extra yarn. So I didn't do that before today because I wanted to show you that yes I did in fact almost finish this shawl but now that I've shown you I will rip it back and take those extra rows out and hopefully by next week I will have a finished Henslow. And this is actually going to be a little bit smaller than I thought. I was thinking it was going to be a little bit bigger than this but um which is perfectly fine because I'm finding that I like the smaller, the smaller shawls. I tend to, I seem to wear them more, even though, um, I do like the bigger ones too. So I'm nervous that the bottom part where the, where the, um, the yarn overs and where the yarn pick stitches were picked up is going to be a little bit too tight because as I put it around my shoulders, um, I feel the tightness in that area, but We'll see how it goes. It'll probably be fine. So, but I'm excited to have it completed. Hopefully that will be this week. Um, yeah. So that's going to be ripped out probably today. Just because I just want to stop thinking about what am I going to do and how is this going to work and all of that. Hopefully it will be done next week. Um, the next, ooh, I forgot to add some. Hang on, I gotta write it down. Because I started a new project. <laughs> Bad. Um, the next project is my mom's socks. And like I said, I worked on these last week on Saturday when we went to my in-laws. This is the first sock, actually the second sock that became the first sock. And I did a tiny bit on that sock. And this sock is ready for the ribbing. I am just past the toe on there. So that sock is ready for ribbing. Um, I will have to wind a little bit more yarn because this is all I have left in this little ball. So I'll have to wind a little bit in order to do the ribbing on that. And I also did the second sock as well. There's the, the stitch marker, and I did all of that. And I did all of this um, at my, at my in-laws last weekend, uh, the drive over, and then um, after dinner, and while we were playing the game, and the drive home, and all of that. And I got quite a bit done. And I actually tried out a new product that I've heard about on a couple other podcasts and I was amazed at how it worked. And it was this thing called um, C-bands that you wear on your wrist. It's like an acupuncture type of thing to help you with nausea if you get car sick. Oh my gosh. These things were fabulous. I mostly got them because 
we're going to Rhinebeck next month, or, yeah, it's next month, but technically, like, three weeks from now. And I was nervous that I was not going to be able to knit in the car while we drive. I mean, it's like a 10-hour drive, and I can knit in the car as long as I do something very simple, like basic socks, uh, where I don't have to, I'm not going to be doing heels or anything in the car, but I was thinking that I just needed something really basic that I, if, that I didn't have to look down at a pattern or look down at my knitting, um, but I found that these C-band things were amazing. I could not believe how much they helped with nausea because I get in the car with my husband and if I try and look at my phone or knit or anything like that, I get car sick because he drives erratically and then the additional movement of my head looking one way or the other, it's just not a good thing. But I was able to knit on this in the car, look down at it, look around, and I didn't have any problem. I was, I was really excited about it. Um, so yeah, so this sock is going to be almost done too because it's right at that point as well for the, um, for the ribbing. So I got to do the ribbing on this one and the ribbing on the second one. And the socks will be done for my mom. I can send those back to her. They'll probably be done this week because, I mean, I'll, I'll probably only do like about an inch and a half of ribbing. Um, so that's probably like 10, eh, might be 15 to 20 rows. So those will go by very quickly as well. So I might have, I'll have to probably have to keep them until I show you next week, but I might have both the Henslow and the socks done next week. The next project is the Effervest socks which are making some progress. I have not worked on the first sock yet, again, because I'm still trying to catch up with the second sock, but I did get a number of rows completed on the second sock. Um, I did, I thought, I thought I had made a mistake, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't think, I don't think I did. Um, I thought that this section here that section there. I thought I did too many rows in between before I did the twist, but I don't think so. I think it just looked weird when I was doing it, but now it looks the same. But I am using my new high high needles and I'm just trying to get a few rows done on these each each week or so. Um, try maybe a couple days couple rows a day, but I'm kind of over them now, so I basically just want to be done with them. Um, I still, I love the yarn, I love the the needles, uh, but I'm kind of done with the pattern, which is why I forced myself to stop working on the first one until I got the second one in the same position, because it wouldn't happen, so I'm almost at the same position now. So if you look at them from the back, there you go. I'm about an inch short on the second one from where I am on the first one. And I do have to change my needles one more time. You'll see that this marker was where I changed the needles the first time, and this is where I changed it the second time. And here it is. I changed it here. No, no, that's not where I changed it. That's where I was last week. But I did change it to the first at this point and then I gotta change it one more time a couple more rows up I think uh oh oops I think I was already supposed to change it <sighs> guess I need to hurry up and change it now oh yeah I was supposed to change it like a row or so back oh yeah something's not right Yeah, I think I might have um, done too many rows in that one because um, it does seem a little bit longer now that I look at it. Oh, well, nobody's going to know, but I am at the point where just about where I have to change. I think two, another two rows, I have to cross them and then cross them again, and then 
I'll be changing my needles. So I'll be on my last needle Oops. for that. And hopefully, I can't promise that these will be done next week, but hopefully there will be more progress on FRVS next week. Okay. So... I also have my fall mystery shawl, which I did finish the fourth clue. We have one more clue to go. And where is this yarn coming from? Let me show you what I have so far. I did keep my lifelines in and I did put another lifeline in. And I don't think you're going to be able to see all that much of it, but... It's got lots of beads, it's fun, it's pretty, it's lace, it's alpaca, it's beautiful, it's soft, I can't wait for it to be done. I am enjoying this project um, quite a bit. Um, I got my, my um, beads early in the week. I, I definitely would have run out, I wouldn't have made it through this clue with the beads that I had, so I'm glad I got the beads. Um, but I found out yesterday, oh no, I found out this morning that I ordered the wrong color of beads for my Even Star. I ordered additional beads to see what I liked, and I realized that I did not order an extra one of the one that I thought I was going to use, so then I would have two. So now I have to order beads again. I don't know. Crazy. needed a little water today um so yeah so I have to I'm gonna have to order beads again but this project is coming right along the second the final clue is supposed to be out today um it does have five clues but the pattern calls for like 800 yards and I believe that I've only used about 500 so far so, if we have another 300 yards of lace weight to knit for the final clue, I don't know how much I'm going to get completed this week. If, if I'm trying to get the Henslow done, my mom's socks, and this, I just don't know if that's going to happen. But we'll see what happens. We'll see where it goes. Um, right now, it doesn't look like it's going to be all that huge of a shawl, but it's really hard to tell when it's on the needles. But it's coming along. It's, it is, I'm, I do really enjoy this project, and I really, really like the beads. I'm definitely going to want to do another beaded shawl where there's beads all throughout. Um, I have done other beaded, other things that were beaded, but the beads were just, um, like at the edge or just a little bit of extra on it but I do like the bees all throughout and I think I would like to do like a an alpaca like black or gray you know that you can wear with a really nice dress so that's where I am and like I said the fifth clue has not come out yet I just checked while we were at lunch thinking that I would come home and after I recorded I would get started on the next rows but it hasn't come out yet. Hopefully it will be coming out soon and I can get that into my knit, knit companion and start working on that as well. But I, I'm pretty sure that the fifth clue is the last clue. I did look up on the, um, the group and it did say there's five clues. So yeah, this should be the last week. And um, I did start a new project. Um, I received some yarn from my friend Michelle for my birthday last year. And it is um, Noro King. And ever since I got it, I have been looking for the, fir the, the perfect project for this yarn. And this week I found the project. Here, this is the, this is the actual yarn and I found the perfect project this week and it's a project called Halyard and let me see if I can pull up a picture really quick maybe 
get my knit companion open. And I don't know, I was, I think I was looking at somebody new joined the group and I think I was looking at their project page and I saw that they did this. And there it is. I'm trying to show you without getting you a bunch of glare. But it is a two color shawl and I am doing it with my King and Knit Picks palette. And this is what I have so far. I'm trying to. <laughs> it's a wormy little thing. I'm trying to be able to show you all the different repeats. So there you go. It's like got a star pattern on it, and it's just different ridges of the different colors or the different yarns. It's two different yarns. And really, it is the perfect pattern for this yarn. Um, the pattern I found is really easy. And I, I don't even have to look at the pattern anymore. I have to see how, um, how many stitches I'm supposed to have or how many segments I'm supposed to have. But that's about it. But I can pretty much knit this um, without looking at the pattern. And in the pattern they give you, they give you options for a small version with, with um, an edge, a large version with an edge, um, a small version without the edge, and a large version without the edge. And I'm not sure exactly which one I'm going to do yet. Um, I was originally thinking I was going to do the large version, but because I'm finding that I like the Charlottes a little bit more than... Um, then the larger shawls, I think I'm going to go with the smaller, um, smaller shawl version and, um, maybe not do the edge, maybe just do the, um, the eyelet edge. I think it's, see, it's this, you can either do this edge, sorry, I'm trying to get this without the glare. You can either do this edge here or this one over here, which is a little just a little bit of a border and I think I'm gonna go with the um, the one without the the big lace edge um, so they give you basically four different yeah it's a cable and lace edge or an eyelet edge and I think I'm just gonna go with the eyelet edge and I might go with the large one without with the eyelet edge because the small one is, I think, going to be a little bit too small. The small is 49 inches wingspan and 10 inches deep, where the large is 65 inches wingspan and 16 inches deep. And that's that with the eyelet edge. Um, if I was doing the large version with the cable and the lace border, it would be 73 inches wingspan and 20 inches deep. So... Um, so yeah, and, and now I think <coughs> I would need, still need just over two balls of the, um, of the Knit Picks palette for the color A and just one ball of the, um, the King. And I actually have two balls of the King. They're two different colors, so... I'm thinking maybe I might knit a second one and do it as a prize for something, either at Knittopia or a raffle or something, because it's a really easy project to knit up, and it really just, it's like, bang. It's very cool. So I like it. I'm enjoying it. It's going very quickly, although... We all know that projects go quickly in the beginning because you have such short rows, but my rows are getting longer and longer and longer and longer. So, but I'm enjoying it. Love it. So that was the perfect project for this yarn. So those are all my knitting projects this week. Um, I have not touched the Fornicating Reindeer hat, um, the Knit Swirls, or my Stripey Socks. The Knit Swirl I know that I was planning on using as my car knitting project going to Rhinebeck, so I'm not like in a huge hurry to do that. And same thing with the Stripey Socks. I'm thinking I'm going to take that in the car for Rhinebeck. 
Um, the Fornicating Reindeer I would like to get done before I go to Rhinebeck, just to have it off my plate. But we'll see what happens with that. Um, I already told you there was no spinning this week. Uh, we do have the September knit along with the slippers and holiday knitting. You will have probably till Monday or Tuesday to post your finished objects. Um, get them in early, but I'll probably lock the thread out Monday or Tuesday. I think Monday is the first, so... Um, so yeah, you'll have a little bit of, you still have a couple more days, but try and get them in as early as possible so you don't get cut off if I happen to g jump in there and close the thread. And then in October, we're doing the, um, the socks, fingering, weight yarn, hexi puffs, anything with fingering, sock, weight yarn will count. So if you're doing socks or... Um, a shawlette or a baby sweater or adult sweater. Anything that's using fingering and weight yarn will count for October. And also our mitten knit along is coming up for um, the Colorwork Mittens by Valerie. And next week I'm doing the drawing for the um, kits. And I said kits. We're going to have two kits. Two kits are going to be given away. And right now, when I looked at the thread just before I started recording, there are 49 people that have um, entered to win these kits. And I'm hoping that all 49 people decide, even if they don't win the kit, that they decide that they're going to knit along with us because that would be so much fun if we had that many people making um, the mittens this, fa this fall. So I will be giving away two kits. They're both the same, the, the, the uh, picture that's on the group uh, with the um, Anchors Away pattern and then the yarn. Now, you don't necessarily have to do the Anchors Away pattern. If you like um, Marley's Garden or something else better, um, you can buy that pattern separately. All the patterns for the color work mittens have to be from um, Valerie. And there's a link in the group. Um, I think she's got 10 patterns out now. Um, so all the patterns have to be f from her, but if you decide, if you win the kit and you decide, well, I don't really want to do the anchors away, I want to do this one, that's perfectly fine. And starting October 1st, there will be a coupon for $1 off patterns for the knit along. So if you're going to be knitting along with us, you can order your pattern and get a dollar off. And I will post in a thread on the group giving you complete instructions on what the code is and how to go about getting the, uh, the discount on your pattern. And that will start October 1st and run through October 15th. Now our knit along doesn't start till November, but you can get your pattern now and then you still have time to get your materials and what have you. But I'm finding that most of her patterns, um, depending on what color, you know, if it's a two color or a three color, most of them don't use more than 250 yards per color. So if you have, say, Knit Picks Palette, um, now Knit Picks Palette, I think, has 225, 20 yards per um, skein. So if you're doing a two color, you might need more than one of one color. But I seem to think that when I did my stinky pink mittens last year that I didn't need more than one ball of each color. But uh, I think she's got all that information on her main project page where you can, you can see that before you buy the pattern. So next week I'll be doing two kits, two drawings. Um, so you still have time to enter for that, and again, the, the knit along will start on November 1st for that. And I think that's all I have for you today. After I finish up here, I think I'm just going to plant myself on the couch and maybe watch the Derby Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other one that Zach Efron's in. That was one of her his earlier films. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I 
I'm going to be knitting. I'm going to take out that hand slow and get that fixed up and um, just do some more knitting. Start the second, the next pair of slippers and I don't know. Tomorrow I got my four mile run and then I'm going to plant myself on the couch for the rest of the day. Or maybe Steve and I are going to go to a cider mill tomorrow. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, don't forget about leaving a review on iTunes, either a star rating or a uh, written review on iTunes if you watch on iTunes. Um, if you don't already know, we do have a group on Ravelry, and you can go over there and join the group and join along with all our chit-chat and knit-alongs that we have going on over there. And the show notes are always on the blog. So if you have any questions, you can check there. And if there's not a link for something that you need information on, you can always PM me on Ravelry or email me, whichever you prefer. And uh, that's all I have for you today. So happy knitting, and I hope your knitting blooms this week. Bye for now.